so uh, I have three, it's the third lecture on the next two leading order. And today I basically, I mean, since I already talk, uh, I mean, I hope you all know the, the, what the next two leading calculations in general. And uh, you already have a tutorial yesterday. So today I will give a bit more of advanced topics on next two leading order. So I would like to emphasize this, uh, is this uh, quota. Is uh, by Peter Anderson. Mo is different. So why Mo is different? So uh, first one is I would like to say Mo interaction is different. Okay. So all the previous talking about I'm in principle talking about one uh, coupling or one interaction, right? QCD inter interaction, for example. And right now, what happens if I have Mo, right? If I have a QCD electroweak interactions at the same time. Okay. Of course, I cannot consider the uh, I, I cannot consider gravity because uh, we do not have a really working quantum gravity at the moment in the, I mean, in the quantum field theory framework. So why is it uh, why is it electroweak? I would say uh, this I first gave some motivations uh, why we care about electroweak. Uh, the first, of course, a, I mean, the same thing, similar thing as yesterday. I say this precision is a keyword to place. So HC run and will run at 14, uh, 13 TV and also future uh, colliders. They really helps you to have the energy able to reach it much deeper into Mount TV reaching, okay? And you have very high integrated luminosities that you, it means you will collect a huge of the data samples. And many, in that case, many processes, uh, so even some layer processes can reach precision uh, accuracy, uh, percent level accuracy measurement. So next to leading on the QCD, right now it's standard and it's automated, but it's still left over about uh, typically 10% of the scale uncertainty, okay? So here's a few examples I just uh, taking from the Medgraph paper. And you will see that these uh, a few examples to see that uh, typically this scale uncertainty at the next two leading order is 10% level. Some is less, some is more, okay? But it's typical uh, laugh, uh, typical value is 10%. So then the next goal is how can I achieve per percent level? I mean, theoretical calculations, right? So then you need a high order, next to next to leading order QCD. Next to leading order QCD is not sufficient. And also you include next to electric corrections because we know that alpha is order percent level, right? So, so here is, I think this is being shown in uh, Fabio's uh, colleague yesterday. I wouldn't go through, but uh, I think you see that uh, there's a different measurement and many benchmark processes being at next to leading order in some less summations has been there. Even some processes in 3 So that means, I mean, uh, HC really need the, the value percent level precision for many processes, and, ex, and this trigger a lot of the theoretical uh, calculations in the in expanding uh, directions. So automation uh, for next to next to leading QCD, of course, it's very hard at the moment, but it's indeed it's very possible that uh, actually has been realized that you can have complete NAO that include both QCD electric subreading orders. I will explain it a bit later to you. So there's a few physics cases I just uh, gave you the idea that why we really need electric corrections. Uh, the first is uh, if you can exploit the TV scale kinematics, okay? Especially that regions you have, you're possible to see some new physics deviations. Then these electric corrections would be 10% level because uh, some Sudakov effect enhancement. I will explain a bit to you later. And there's a many, many high precision measurement and present and will come soon, for example, like cross-section ratios of uh, ratios between different centers of mass energy, especially in particular useful for the, to extract the PDFs and also different processes, right? Here's, I think, examples of different energies of Z, okay? 13 TV or 7 TV, there's a huge, uh, you have very systematic, huge systematic uncertainty will be cancels between the ratio. 
and you can measure very, very precisely in principle. And also some fundamental parameters, standard model parameter like WMS, okay? You see that the precision many are, some are is, uh, I mean, 1% uh, level, right? The, for example, the mass, right? It's about around 1%, even below that. And also some many differential cross-sections for candle process like top block bear or ZPT, like this ZPT distribution, you see that uh, it seems, uh, um, I mean, it seems natural leading order is not sufficient to describe data. You have some structures that uh, is deviates the natural leading order, okay? But uh, also, the, I mean, so this case uh, that we need the next to next to leading order in principle. And the, the, the deck is extremely precise, even preciser than the next to next to leading order calculation at the moment. So let's start from the, what is an electric reactions. It seems very simple, right? This we see the yesterday's lecture, see, right? It's just uh, the expansion of the, uh, the partonic cross-section via the Previously, we have the QCD alpha expansion, QCD expansion, so leading on the next to leading on the next to next to leading on there, and you actually could just like alpha expansion, right? However, the situation is a bit complicated because, uh, because so this is, a, so far it seems, it's obvious that electric equation is just one order alpha more than the response born. However, the situation is a bit complicated because you may have uh, different uh, Orders at at the bone. For example, dijet production at the HC PP collider. So you will have a, a QQ bar and halation into dijet, amplitude squared, and QQ bar go to the uh, this view wrong. QQ bar view Z O photon to the dijet, right? And then co uh, take the com compass conjugate with uh, uh, interface with uh, with the ground, right? This is uh, another order, different order with these, right? At amplitude squared level. And this is uh, Z and photon amplitude squared, right? So they contribute to alpha S squared, alpha S alpha, alpha squared. So in principle, we see that this is smaller than this because alpha is smaller than alpha is, right? Alpha S is likely 1%, uh, no, 0, uh, 10%, and alpha is likely 1%, right? So 10 times smaller, okay? Uh, so this is smaller than this, and this is smaller than this, right, in principle. Uh, but then you need, if you care about electric recorrection, uh, percent level accuracies, uh, then you need to consider the alpha, right? Uh, so this diagram, I mean, this kind of contribution you need to include, and also you need to include the um, uh, corrections, right? Alpha S I already mentioned yesterday in principle, so you can go to the alpha S, just the radiation ground or to the one loop ground, you will see that uh, this is uh, uh, QCD corrections, right? Next to lead QCD corrections. So you can go further this way, it will be neck to neck to lead you know, N3L QCD corrections, right? But if you consider the electric corrections, you have R for expansion with, with respect to your bone. So if your underlying bone is from alpha S squared, you just uh, emit a photon or Z, whatever, if possible, sometimes Z and uh, also in the loops as well, right? So this is contributes to the uh, electric recorrections to this bone, right? But also, from underlying or from this bone, you have QCD corrections. If you can allow him to emit a ground, right, from this underlying bone, then this has contributed the same order as uh, this, right? So they contribute uh, uh, both uh, electric recorrections, right? So that's mean you, you, you usually refer this is next to leading QCD corrections, alpha S third, and this is a next to leading electric corrections term, alpha S square alpha, and also have others, right? You can go further this way, I mean, and uh, based on different bone, underlying bones, so you have alpha S alpha squared, alpha third. So these black ones we usually call the subreading contributions, okay? And this is what we call the next to leading electric contributions, and this is a QCD, okay? So this is what I'm meaning, I mean, uh, uh, what I'm talking about, electric corrections, okay? Uh, so there are many, many cases, in, in fact, when it comes into, if, uh, in, in standard model in particular, uh, if you are considered electric corrections, first, you, you cannot ignore the off-shear effect, that is, being, usually we calculate TT bar, we let the top block is stable, then decay afterwards, right, with nano wave operations. However, this is a, uh, this is not the case if you consider the electric crashing because, uh, because the off-shear effect is also gamma over M 
is also our, all the alpha level, right? And this one should also contribute to, to your, uh, I mean, if expanding your bone of this off shear effect, you will contribute next to the electric corrections, right? And there are also other things that's ignored in the typical QCD corrections. For example, pho I mean, photon can come from the proton as well in, in this case, right? And this is uh, quite relevant in, in many processes, actually. And this is, at, at the beginning, it was very poorly constrained, and right now there's a new, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, the new um, uh, groundbreaking work by some people is about the Lux QED approach. And this can, really can help constrain the photon PDF at the, at the uh, percent level accuracy. Okay? And uh, also, there's uh, some other theoretical issues you can imagine or you can think that, uh, in principle, if right now, actually, photon and uh, massless electron. All these particles are because massless. So if you want to define in further way, you need the cluster as same as quarks and gluons to be a jet-like particles, right? You cannot ask, in principle, you cannot ask what is your single photon because it's not in further. It's like in QCD, you cannot ask what is my single gluon at the next to leading order, right? You need a clustering them. Uh, so they are not, in principle, not well separated. But still, at the detector level, we can still ask, right? Because if you have the photon, if you have your electron, you have the energy to come, uh, deposit uh, at the electron meters, right? So then, I mean, usually you would like to distinguish between the, what is the photon, what is jet, what is the leptons, right? So this is kind of, if you want to do this separately, you need to tag your photon, actually. In this case, the, 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 the general approach is known is using some fermentation functions approach. Or oh, some approximations in some cases that work, but not, uh, I mean, not work in general. So another issue you have, you can, you can think that, I mean, in previous case, for example, uh, here, usually we emit a photon because photon is inferred and unsafe. You need to cancel the divergent. But why not ask to emit the weak boson as well, for example, WZ, right? And they contribute the same order. The only thing is, uh, um, uh, I mean, probably if your phase space is not enough, it uh, have some phase space separations, right? But however, uh, if your phase space is enough, for example, at HC, then WZ radiation could be big as well, right? Uh, then why you do not ask this? But however, I mean, at the, at, if your measurement, you don't ask this because this is different uh, as what you asked before as a digest final state. This actually is a, is a Z plus digest final state, right? So it's a different final state. So if, this is my case, so if, if, if the phase space is enough, whether we need to include the massive weak boson radiations, because they can be often as well. And, uh, and this one, I mean, in principle, you can, if you're, you can detect perfectly, then in principle, you can distinguish, because, uh, uh, um, because uh, I mean, this is a Z plus digest final state. It's not a digest final state. However, detect is not always coverage the, the heraging. So, so Z, I mean, Z always can, Escape your detect acceptance, right? Or some, in some cases, Z could have a decay to some invisible things as well, right? So it's very, a bit tricky whether really, in, I mean, you need to include them, okay? And it's important, actually, I will say, uh, talk about this. It's, it's try to cancel partially of the so called electric pseudo curve locks. And, uh, and the last point I would say is the general matching between the material elements and the pattern shower is difficult. Uh, this difficulty is very simple because uh, if you're asking for the QCD corrections to like this line, it's fine because uh, uh, typically, I mean, as mentioned yesterday, it's typically your underlying bone is always something squared, right? However, if you're asking for both QCD electroweak, you your underlying bone could be from interference. And the uh, pattern shovel picture is typically a classical picture, right? It's not a quantum, it's not an interference picture, right? So it's very hard in this way. Uh, I mean, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to have a general matching of between the match element pattern shell if you have both QCD and electric corrections at the same time. So here's an example that is, uh, where is a photon channel, a photon uh, initial state channel is, uh, is relevant. You see that uh, this is uh, PP to 
I think it's, uh, it's uh, Z, ZZ and Z, one Z decay to the two lepton and one Z decay to the two neutrino. And you will see that uh, um, at the beginning, the different uh, PDF, photon PDF gave completely different uh, predictions. This is just because of photon PDF. And right now, the Lux QED, of course, uh, is widely acknowledged to be the best one to describe the photon PDF. Okay? So they are, in electric there's not like QCD crushing, there actually is also different uh, uh, schemes to normalize your uh, couplings. And it's widely used is alpha zero scheme. Actually, this is valid. They have both advantages and disadvantages, okay? So alpha zero scheme is knows that appropriate for external photon, in particular for external final photon, okay? Uh, and alpha MZ scheme uh, works good for the internal photon, okay? And the GMU scheme works good for the weak bosons and well, and, as, and the value is also measured in GMU scheme, okay? So, um, so I mean, uh, so that just means things would be a bit complicated. Huh? If, you, if you think that, uh, um, um, if you think that there's some process, if you have involved both the weak bosons and photons in the final state, right? And what, how, how do you do it? It's appropriate. Of course, one point I want to emphasize, if you go to the natural leading order, what, whatever scheme you're using, you always get the same natural leading order piece, okay? You only have one unicorn natural leading order piece. But the difference is next to next, the high orders, okay? The different scheme lists some different of high order uh, contributions. So should we use a different uh, randomization scheme for the uh, same diagrams in different vertex? Huh? Is this a question? Uh, so there's another, uh, another thing is, uh, how do we say that we can capture the high order, uh, for example, uh, high order of electric and QCD corrections? For the Young process, it's approved that actually the QCD corrections can be factorized out with the electric correction at some points. So that's the best uh, way. It's a key factor means the uh, next to leading order cross-section over the leading order cross-section, okay? So, At some point, um, oops. sorry. Uh, at some point, that for some process, is the, uh, the the best approximation is using this k factor multiplicity. Okay, multiply two k factors. At some point, it's not the case. So you need to just to k factor times k factor electricity times q k factor next to the electric minus one, right? As the as the QCD times uh, QCD and electric combined the uh, accuracy, right? There are a few cases electric corrections can be enhanced as well. So for one is uh, uh, enhance electric by your cover couplings. If you, for example, if you look at his plus two jets as HC, there's a uh, uh, alpha is normal alpha expansion over alpha pi. But you also have your cover couple enhancement because you have mt squared over mw squared. And this gives a factor four kind of that, right? So it's a 5%, it's not 1% anymore. Uh, there's also enhanced by electric equation by electromagnetic logarithm, especially if you want to ask uh, initial state radiation at electron positron colliders, then you have uh, sometimes uh, have uh, alpha log mz squared, uh, me squared, and this gave you 3% as well. And then if you ask for some exclusive muon, okay, if your muon, I mean, a detector you can look at from muon chamber, you can distinguish what is muon. Then you ask for the muon final state. Then you also have alpha times log mz squared over a mu squared, a uh, large log enhancement, okay? So the, the famous one is, uh, if you go to the kinematics, is the high kinematics. Uh, high energy kinematics, you will see that uh, electric corrections is uh, enhanced, by, enhanced by the electric so called Sudakov law. Lesson. So, what it is, so it is from if you're looking at uh, the part, uh, scattering, something scattering, and you cal calculate the W loop, okay, then you will see that if you calculate loop, you will see some uh, um, uh, SU2 uh, Casimir operator, uh, Casimir. Uh, I mean, Casimir coefficient times alpha times log. This log is your, uh, for example, the momentum transfer or the total invalid mass of final state over mw squared, okay? And there's a, this double log. There's also single log. And remember that double log is minus sign here, okay? So if 
if no molecule is the electric scale, it's not a matter, right? Because it's just order, I mean, so, uh, the Q square is order one mc square, so log smelly small. But if Q go to really high energy, if you high a final state, one TV, for example, then uh, you have this log is double log is enhanced, it's 26% times alpha. Uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the coefficient, right? It's minus. And the leading log, uh, the next leading log uh, is uh, li uh, the, li the single log, that means, is 16%. So you see that if you go to tails, the electric uh, uh, corrections can be enhanced. And the important is future, you see that's the, the negative sign here. So electric corrections to go to tails is always, usually is negative, you will see. So unlike uh, a logarithm generated by ground of photons, such log cannot be canceled exactly, but can be canceled partially. Okay? One thing is you can include also real emissions of WZ. Okay? And then uh, they can be, if they can be uh, partial, at least can be partially constructed, so they can be partially constructed. But if you include them, then you left over some uh, kind of single log. Okay? But this single log cannot be canceled exactly because uh, your initial state, that proton, is not SU2 singlet. But remember that proton is color singlet. So QCD is SU3 singlet. But electric is not. So it's, it's, SU2, it's not SU2 singlet particle. So you will have left over some, uh, some of the PDF difference. You, uh, you quark PDF with, uh, with isospin uh, partner of the quarks uh, PDF minus log, single log, okay? So the, if they are identical, they are, I mean, they are, they are, they are CO2 singulate. But if not, then proton is not, of course, definitely. So you're left over, you're always left over some uh, uh, partial uh, pseudocode of log. Uh, so this is, uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, one example you can see that uh, for the WW, uh, WW final state. And you see that uh, uh, this is absolute prediction and it is relatively to the, your leading order uh, predictions. And you see that this next leading QCD corrections is enhanced. However, the electric correction is quite negative at the, at the PT is sufficiently large of the lepton, okay, to TV, for example. And, uh, and this, of course, gives some ambiguities. How do you combine the QCD corrections and electric corrections? We use the multiple way, K factor, or plus way, because you have both two big uh, corrections, and this will give a significant difference between how do you combine it, right? Unless you go to the high order, right? Then you will find that uh, which one is the best way to capture the more I mean, high order corrections. Okay, so there's a both large positive QCD corrections with negative elect large electric weak corrections. And the QCD times electric weak different quite, uh, difference quite significantly with the QCD plus electric weak. So there are, uh, but however, the electric pseudocode of log is not only, uh, only the play, I mean, it's not always uh, relevant in pseudocode region. There's uh, some other special cases in face space corners like uh, uh, by uh, Data Mayer's paper in uh, 2010, I mean, Dre Young process, a large email mass, will receive large contribution from small T, in fact. Okay, they also gave you some, some big uh, log enhancement. So when the electric corrections is, uh, is really uh, matters at the tail, you can see that it really, of course, it's a question of uh, uh, which machines, uh, which energy, which of the luminosities you have, right? So the process for this example, you see that HC right now, and a high luminosity HC, and high energy HC, and FCC with the final uh, luminosities, you will see that they can go to probe different tails. Uh, I mean, of course, FCC, you can go to much higher tails, right? And you see that's uh, how big it is, how relevant when they are. Uh, so it, this region is particularly interesting because BSM uh, effect is affected to be enhanced, right? Uh, and this is, a, so that's why, uh, I mean, people are looking at the tails of the of distributions and uh, they must be care about electric, possible electric corrections for the, uh, for the tails, right? Uh, so, um, however, I mean, you may worry about things, you have the large logarithm, whether the large logarithm we need to do the summation as well. However, I mean, for HC at least, I mean, if you go to tail high, higher, alpha L is close to one, yes. Definitely, you need that because uh, fixed order calculations spoiled off, spoiled by uh, by the large log. 
I mean, for the HC, typically, though so alpha A is big, but it's still 20%, for example. Then you squeal them, of course, gives you 4% of next order. So it's not really mandatory, but if you want to include, of course, you can include that, right? Uh, for the leading log, at least. So right now, it's completely automated uh, to the, uh, in the medical 5 MCO uh, for the next to leading order QCD and next to leading electric reconstruction. So, uh, even for the complete NO. Uh, so this is, I, I showed, I mean, this uh, different uh, structure, you will see that the MAD, F, MAD loop and CATOS, MAD FKs and MCSNO, uh, the her of MAD graph. And you have tried uh, yesterday with, uh, with total, in the tutorial to generate this process at this QCD corrections, right? It's fairly simple that you just uh, a few comments to get uh, QCD corrections working. And right now, uh, you can also, I mean, if you have a version of 3 point something, 3.01 beta, I think right now. So in principle, you can also have all QCD and electric correction at the same time. So generate process, but uh, not only QCD in the bracket, also include QED in the bracket. And output, uh, do the same thing, just put QED, right? So the, 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 the only drawback is right there, there's no matching to the shower, okay, at the moment. So this is syntax in principle. If you, in general, if you can pick in which blocks, uh, blobs you want to pick in, uh, then you just uh, specify which orders you need. Uh. So this is the example. I don't go to details, but uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can check the papers. There's many details inside. Then, I mean, it typically gives you that the, the syntax will already picking up the given orders you want, not only uh, next to the electric. So here is a few examples. Uh, so you can look at the next leading electric NAO2 we called electric corrections part and compare it to leading order, leading order one, and this electric corrections part. And if we try the uh, 24 processes, uh, you will see that uh, of course uh, at total inclusive cross section level with some uh, minimal cuts for some jets or elect uh, electrons or uh, leptons, and you will see that. Uh, um, uh, electric cracking, I mean, true electric cracking at the total inclusive cross section level is a bit, uh, uh, quite a rely a lot. It really depends on the processes, right? So, if you go to, of course, if you go to the more electric boson in final state, the uh, one thing is, uh, I mean, you have more, uh, let's see, more cra electric cracking, it uh, could be the minus 10, minus 15. And uh, also because of your uh, final state email mass is bigger right, at some point, right? So it's a really a matter of uh, 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 which kind of uh, precision or orders you, uh, uh, you, you ask. So it's possible that electric corruption is not percent level, but at the minus 15% level. Uh, here's the numbers, so I don't uh, ask you to read it, uh, but just gives you and see that there's a different process you can uh, generate with different syntax, okay? You can check that. Uh, with syntax, also you can calculate O, okay? O blobs, that's completed in O, we code. So different, uh, there's a few examples, TT bar, TT bar Z, TT bar W, TT bar X, and TT bar Z, so different orders you will see. You will also get, the, you can also get it. So, now I move to, to, uh, to the, another uh, topic, is called, uh, uh, I would say that more particle is different as well, okay? If you uh, if you're looking at uh, um, standard model, of course we know that standard model particles all you have. But if you're looking at the BSM in particular, you will see that you have additional more rich mass, uh, more rich particle spectrum. Okay, in that case, how can I do the next two leading on the QCD correction? You may have new issues arising. Okay, so I I just give you one example here, a few examples. I mean one example basically here. Uh, so. These are things that I think is I borrowed from, from Fabio's slides at some point. So that's all the way of uh, uh, what do do, do the BSM uh, uh, theory and experiment interactions. Okay, so typically you have ideas in the, I mean probably uh, ten years ago, you have ideas. Then you write it like Longin, you use a film, uh, you develop fan manuals, then write empty to calculate cross section and produce one paper, and then. Based on these, okay, this pattern level cross uh, calculation, then I can do, my, uh, do better. So I can automate the fin laws and generate any 
uh, amplitude and calculate any cross-section and matching to the pattern shower uh, and have a detector and produce another paper. And then put it, I mean, if you have new Monte Carlo, you can further uh, to play with your new Monte Carlo, right? Have a beta detector simulation, so you have a uh, maybe, uh, another paper to compare the uh, data, right? So, of course, the situation is completely changing in these days. So, right now, you just have the, this uh, one string line from ideas you have already seen, the idea for like launching fin laws uh, to ge generate the, uh, some uh, uh, femur laws, and then go to the ma uh, material elements generators uh, to simulate the signal background to generate events. Of course, some supplemental uh, tools you can use at some stage. And then to the partnership of hydronization to detect simulations and to compare to the data, right? So, so one path for all, and the physics software validation streamlined, and robust efficiency uh, communications between theory and experiment, it works both for the top down and bottom down, a uh, bottom up approach. Uh, so, here I think Benjamin already mentioned a lot of uh, these, so I gave a quick, I skipped most of them probably. So I just gave a quick uh, thing, how to incorporate all of the above information into model file. So you usually, I mean, you use uh, 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 fan laws and model.fr, then get some UFO. Previously, there's different, uh, uh, for different uh, uh, event generators, just generate different model formats. And right now, yes, UFO stand for the uh, universal fan laws output, and that is, uh, generally applicable to, uh, to, all, all, to, uh, to all tools in principle. And this is a uh, next to leading order, you can also plug it with some uh, additional modules in the fan laws like in OCT and the fan arts, um, then uh, generate the model. Okay, I, I don't go through, I think I just skip, skip this one. I think. So this is a, yeah, skip this one. So this is a, I th can you understand what is, uh, what is UFO model? Uh, and the, particularly next to leading order, here you have some counter terms uh, files needed to, to provide it. And these particles, uh, uh, I mean, I think uh, you, you see that particle information is in the UFO. You can open this, uh, open this file to understand this. So all the particle information, uh, the, the parameter uh, information, uh, and uh, there's uh, uh, Lorentz structure Feynman laws, that means Feynman laws, vertex, uh, Lorentz structures, couplings. Uh, in particular for next to leading order, you make sure that coupling orders are a pretty big expansion to be one. Okay, in leading order, it would be not omitted, omitted or, or zero okay, at some point. So this is uh, if you want to have your right, your, your uh, earn models, you, uh, next to leading order models, and make sure, uh, be attention to these. Uh, then uh, there's also the additional next to leading order pieces needed is, for example, the parameters of the randomization scale in the parameters and the counter terms. So I just gave you an example that's counter terms, how complicated of counter terms you have in a general BSM model. Um, so this is the counter terms for the, I think, for the, uh, for the, for what, for the UV, for the R2. Okay, so there's so many vertexes, so for foreground, as for the QCD, it's very simple, right? But uh, for counter terms, this is uh, if you have the, in the SUSE supersymmetry, you'll see that uh, these foreground are two counter terms, uh, I explained it yesterday to you, and there's so many vertexes, okay? And uh, also for each, uh, um, this is uh, this is what? This is UV, yeah, yeah, this is UV, that's an randomization counter term, so many, and uh, for each, uh, for each couplings, you see that this QCD one, see QCD uh, couplings, UV couplings, very simple, one, one line. Uh, and uh, uh, CT parameters, also one line, right, for QCD. Uh, and this is a uh, uh, value is minus one is the coefficient of one of epsilon and zero is finite piece. Uh, but however, I mean, if you're looking at the, uh, looking at the, <laughs> A BSM of the supersymmetry, you will see that uh, it's extremely, extremely lengthy. So that's why complicated mass spectrum, or particle spectrum, makes uh, computation very heavy. So that you don't want to do yourself, right? You ask for the computer to do this. Twenty minutes. Okay, good. I think I go to the last, uh, last point I want to talk about. So, uh, so another issue at next to leading order is uh, um, if you have a much rich particle spectrum, 
Then how do you define the final state at the next leading order without spoiling perturbation and convergence? What I mean? So this example, let's consider gluino pair production in supersymmetry. I want to calculate gluino pair at next to leading order. Then I allow it to emit of uh, quarks in the final state. Okay, so this is a next to leading on the Leo emission diagram to the gluino pair production. However, uh, if, you, if you see that, if you generate the order of Leo diagrams, you will also generate this kind of diagrams. That means you have made it a squawk in the intermediate, uh, uh, intermediate steps. Okay, and uh, uh, this, they are exactly the same final state as, as this one. Uh, the, 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 point is there is, uh, the point here is. Uh, in fact, this is a, if the squawk mass is heavier than the gluino, squawk can decay into the gluino and the core, right? So in this case, it's, it's, it's not really an act leading on the contribution to the score, uh, gluino uh, pair production. Actually, it is what? It is leading on the glu gluino squawk production with the squawk decay into the gluino plus squawk, right? So, so th this one is huge, of course, if you, uh, uh, if you compute it in your Mercury, it, because of the resonance, it's huge, uh, uh, it's, it's a big number, okay, compared to the correction itself. So it's completely spoil uh, your predictability of convergence. So how can we avoid this? How can we treat this? How can we remove this, okay? We don't want this because uh, uh, this is another type of final state, right? So this is uh, some code, we, it's called the simplified treatment of resonance. So there's an uh, automated uh, uh, in the metagraph uh, uh, as a plug-in as a meta str, so it simplifies the treatment of resonance. Uh, how, how can we uh, phrase this uh, problem in, in, uh, I mean, in, in, in the way is uh, if you consider the leading order is uh, A plus B scattering into delta particle plus something else, okay? And next to leading on the layer emission, you have A plus B scattering to delta plus some massless particles, right? Gluons or quarks into final state, okay? It's QCD corrections if it is. So then you may have beta and gamma go to joint to a view made it to a beta, right? It's another particle, right? A squawk here in the case, okay? So you may have two. But in empty level, you have both contribution, that is, without the beta as the intermediate particle like, uh, uh, like this, right? And uh, with a beta as intermediate particle uh, like, uh, like this, right? Squawk in the case, right? Then you calculate empty squared level, then you have uh, uh, non beta and no resonance part squared, uh, the interface part, and uh, the uh, pure um, resonance squared part, right? How to get rid of this, okay? How to get rid of the, uh, especially this big number? There are, there are several proposals, but there are no fully satisfactory solutions, okay? So the, the earliest one is just diagram removal. What do I do? So diagram removal means I just at empty the level or to affirm a diagram, I just get rid of this blue one, okay? I don't need this. I don't need the resonance, then I just keep this, okay? Keep the, 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 the blue one. So, Empty square level, that means I just keep the, the, the first term here, right? And do nothing. So yeah, calculate an actual leading order. So this is a remove the resonance diagrams of amplitude, okay? Another thing, I can do slightly better, right? I, I, I could include the interference, why I get rid of these, right? Because this is not also a, 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 a resonance of a, a beta production, right? A beta production, I will only calculate A plus B to the beta, scattering and beta decay, right? So this is typically, include this, right, only. So I include interference into my empty square level. It's a diagram removal improved uh, uh, approach, it means, okay? Uh, then I can do better, uh, much better than, than this. I mean, this is very simple, just remove the diagrams, remove the empty squared. Uh, I can do better. Better is I construct the counter terms instead of remove this diagram directly. And why we do this, I will explain a bit later to you. Uh, well, I can go this directly, maybe. So, because all this, what do you do here, remove diagrams, not gauge invalidance in general, especially in off-shear regions, of the beta is off-shear. Uh, so, you need to do uh, a bit better to construct the counter terms to always calculate uh, this kind of beta squared terms you were subtracted is, uh, is let the momentum reshuffle into the 
to the beta, uh, to the beta is unshear, okay? Because if you just calculate a plus b plus delta gamma, invariance delta gamma not necessary to be the mass of the of the beta, right? You can be uh, deviated, right? But uh, uh, but this, if you I mean remove the also offshear region, you will also have uh, I mean, remove some gauge dependent part in the offshear region. So we uh, one need to do is just construct the counter terms and asking for that uh, um, you uh, calc what you subtract is only the uh, unshear region one. Okay, but so this is require you I mean some counter term can be. Uh, um, have some uh, f function dependent. This means uh, uh, just uh, to uh, um, uh, the ratio of the two bre Brevikna because the general Brevikna without uh, without uh, the I mean can be off shear and uh, uh, I mean the and the on shear right. So that's uh, I mean just the two uh, ratio of two Brevikna and to do some momentum transfer uh, uh, reshuffling to make uh, delta gamma. What you calculate counter term is always uh, let the, on the on the beta. I mean the the beta on shear region. So there are different ways. Of, you have freedom to do to choose what is f function and how do you do the momentum reshuffling. So uh, so there's a different relation. You see that ratios of two Brevikna with running ways uh, with uh, not running ways standard Brevikna and to to final state of momentum reshuffling initial state of reshuffling. You have different combinations. Okay, and there's a different relations of these. And there's no way that you can argue that which one is better than the others. Okay. So here's an example uh, um, to see that uh, if you're looking, we looking at the inner supersymmetry, just looking at jet uh, plus uh, missing et final state, you will like complicated final state if let everything decay. So you have the Gluino production with the long, uh, with the decay runs, and you have a Gluino squawk production. Uh, Gruino decayed, squawk decayed, or even much longer uh, to squawk, I mean, squawk decay ranges. So they contribute a different level of the mud jet and, uh, and missing ETs. Um, how much time? Okay. 10 minutes? Okay. I should have finished. It's my last slide. So, <laughs> so what you can do right now, so uh, um, right now Metagraph, you can allow you to do it uh, automatically. Just uh, if you have some such problem, how to I remove my lesions in a different way? I just uh, use a mode equal to method str. This is my plugin. Then I import uh, the model, calculate the gluino pair production. For example, this gluino pair production, and then output the launch. And you can choose in wrong card different values of of options with different uh, uh, ISTR. This I explained previously. Uh, different uh, ISTR mode. And then to check, it's important things to check the systematically dependent of different uh, resonance subtractions. Uh, so, for example, if you see these if in the tails, you see that I think the red is uh, ISTR4 is initial, uh, and the green is ISTR3. It's initial reshuffling, initial state reshuffling, three and four. Momentum initial state momentum reshuffling. Okay, this case has apparently large deviation at at, at the tail of H T, right? So um, what happens here? Uh, the reason is if you do the mo initial momentum reshuffling, you also need to change your uh, partonic luminosity. That's change your PDF uh, uh, PDF things. So this, however, the PDF at large X is not uh, very well constrained. So it's very sensitive to large poor constrained large X PDF, and this make Gives you that uh, there's large deviation if you do the uh, if your uh, if your delta plus gamma is not really unshear it's a bit far from off off shear then you move to the unshear region you have a big reshuffling and make the PDF ratios completely uh, di uh, different so the point here is important to check the systematic dependence always for this kind of issue you have so this is my last slide thanks so I just gave you some examples that. Uh, uh, in general, there's something new could come if you to perform next to leading calculations. <laughs> <laughs>